Do you love your ears? Welcome, everybody. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy, and I've been in and out of recording studios, directing voiceover sessions for about 20 years now, which is why I'm so excited to be joining the Snapdragon Insider crew and get a chance to speak with Sarah McMurray from the voice and music product team at Qualcomm Technologies International in their Belfast office working on Qualcomm Snapdragon Sound. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me on this chat today. Hi, Juan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be talking to you today about Snapdragon Sound um, and all things audio. I uh, work with uh, Qualcomm's personal audio business and I'm part of the team that helps uh, commercialize some of our audio solutions for use in personal audio products like earbuds, headphones, more than 10 years ago now. Um, I'm giving away my age here. I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to guide us through this conversation really well. All of my audio conversations, whenever I have a guest, I have to put them on the spot. When you listen on a new piece of hardware, when you're when you're testing out some of these new features, what is the first piece of media you, you like to fire up? Well, it's interesting you should ask that this. I actually get asked this question like quite a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, I always kind of think of first of the, the song that I know that I don't want to use, which is, <laughs> is Journeys Don't Stop Believing. Um, it's a great song, don't get me wrong. I sat beside an audio engineer for many years um, and that was his song of choice for testing <laughs> um, audio codecs. So I think mm -hmm. I heard that song every day, maybe 20 it or 30 times. got a little times. played out. Yeah. And yeah. um, so I'm, I'll be quite happy never to hear it again. Oh, um, no. Um, <laughs> Poor journey. <laughs> I don't know if I have a go-to song. Um, I think that I tend to veer towards a certain type of a track. Female vocals, for example, anything with cymbals, kind of higher frequency content is always good. It's hard to kind of share. I mean, we have to use these really emotional terms to talk about very analytical uh, pieces of, of the audio chain. How do Qualcomm engineers judge what a good digital audio experience should be? For us, there are kind of really three things that, that, that sum up a great digital audio experience. So it's robust connectivity. It's great sound, whether that's voice or music streaming, um, and it's very low latency. You know what makes or breaks um, a good wireless audio experience is the, the audio codec that's used. And if you think about Bluetooth audio as a pipe, the audio codec's job is to take the music and break it down into chunks, compress it, and send it over the Bluetooth link. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But actually, when you, you take that and bring it to like real world scenarios, a busy shopping mall or train station, or if interference from Wi-Fi and other devices can really affect the consistency and the quality of that link. And you start to get those really annoying dropouts and, and, and glitches that can really ruin, you know, the experience. I think a lot of people get caught up in this this notion of quality. And quality seems to mean something different to everyone you talk to. If you're watching a movie and the audio is falling behind the mouths talking, that takes you away from from that piece of media, especially in terms of accessibility, making sure everyone has access to a premium audio experience. Yeah, I mean, latency um, is another thing that, that that's really crucial. You know, we're not just listening to music, we're, you know, uh, making calls, we're gaming. So I think the latency piece for, for gaming and for that, you know, video experience is, is crucial. Inherently within Bluetooth, there are very, very long latencies, 200, 300, 400 milliseconds. Most of us, I'm sure, have experienced that terrible <laughs> experience of, you know, yeah. like the, the audio almost like comically um, out of sync. And it's just not, you know, it's just not fit for purpose but we've actually managed to drive latencies down to less than 90 milliseconds for true wireless earbuds and and we've had some customers come to market recently with um, earbuds that I think are like around 89 milliseconds which is totally you know phenomenal. I would imagine that this is also another element of Snapdragon sound. There, there's room to improve quality especially working with carriers to improve the data transmission the signal transmission that last step is also pretty critical in helping people communicate and and keeping them untethered from their pocket computers. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, that's kind of like, that, that's the crux of Snapdragon Sound, really. It's, you know, realizing that, you know, we've done so, tons and tons of work to improve wireless audio over the past number of years. And, you know, we're continually striving to, you know, make the experience better for consumers. So we've made these improvements for the music quality. But something that I think has become a uh, really important a technology called Aptex Voice that's 32 um, kilohertz super wideband voice what that means is you're really getting more true to life audio when you're making calls it's pretty striking when you hear the difference between you know the, the super wideband and the other the other kind of older solutions we're looking at the entire audio chain 
and optimizing it end to end. You know, we have all of this goodness um, on the connectivity side with technologies like our Fast Connect, on the mobile side with our Snapdragon mobile platforms, and then on the audio side, on the Bluetooth SoC, you know, we've, we, um, we have a huge portfolio of, of, of technology that, that's used there by lots and lots of different consumer electronics brands. This seems to be the crux of, of the main uh, announcement that's being made here with Snapdragon Sound. Qualcomm is in that unique position of kind of working in between a number of different organizations, manufacturers. And so that is a very, a very rare niche to be able to influence and, and kind of be the go-between between between a number of these different organizations, manufacturers, and end users. Instead of, you know, hearing it kind of, you know, third hand, we we actually go out and we do consumer research to really understand what consumers want. Instead of, you know, kind of putting this technology out there and, you know, crossing our fingers that it just works, we're actually taking the devices to our test facility in Taiwan and we're um, testing them against these kind of key metrics of audio quality, voice quality, um, latency and robustness. Then once they pass the, 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 those tests and they're happy with the performance and know that they all work and play nicely together, they actually will carry the, the Snapdragon Sound uh, badge. Consumers can go into Best Buy or wherever they go to buy these and know that you know when they pick up a device um, that has a Snapdragon Sound logo that it actually will be a, a very consistent and reliable experience. A, a badge process, I mean, it sounds so simple. But you know, being able to put a sticker on the side of the box that means some kind of certification or qualification actually, to me, seems like it would be a pretty significant consumer benefit. But it's funny, um, we uh, I tend to use my mom <laughs> as a test bed. I always think <laughs> if my mom can get it, <laughs> like, if my mom, I hope she never sees this, by the way, I give it to my mom. And if she can get it set up, then I think it's we're on to a winner. I think these announcements are always exciting. I think folks, and especially consumers, they want to know almost immediately when are products going to be out in the market that they can get their hands on. At the launch, we were very excited to, to be able to um, announce that we have um, two customers, Audio-Technica, a really highly respected uh, audio mm-hmm. brand from Japan, um, and Xiaomi, um, a leading mobile um, <clears throat> manufacturer, are both adopting um, uh, Snapdragon Sound and will be bringing products to market very soon. I can't say too much, but there's a whole host of other other products that will that, that will come to market, you know, over the course of the next 12 months. The the Snapdragon Insiders team put out um, requests for questions. And, and it was really cool to see that uh, these replies, these questions came in from all over the globe. I mean, this is a universal conversation that we're having here and trying to improve audio. I wanted to start with something kind of simple. And this question comes from at Techzilla, which headphones use Qualcomm's latest chipset? That's a really great question. The easiest way for um, your viewers and listeners to to, to find out um, which ones do is to visit our aptex.com website. So that's aptx.com. And there are tons of um, different categories and product listings on there. And you can see the latest and greatest headphones that support, support our technology. We've got a question from Sajid in India. When will wireless audio have the same fidelity as wired headphones? That's a really, really great question. I think with Aptex, we have um, made, and Snapdragon Sound, we have made um, significant improvements. So we are able to deliver 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. But I think it's something that we'll continue to work on and continue to improve. With Snapdragon Sound, we've really set ourselves a challenge of delivering wired audio quality wirelessly. And I don't think we'll stop until we deliver that. We've got a question here from Calicomb. How will latency be addressed? Latency is one of those things that is crucially important for mobile gaming and for watching video. So over the past number of years, we've driven down latencies, you know, from from hundreds of milliseconds with Aptex to, you know, 89 milliseconds. So there are actually devices on the market now that can deliver 89 milliseconds, which for gaming, for watching video content is, is perfect. A question from a Snapdragon insider in Germany. What is the maximum range of this wireless sound tech? It really depends on the use case. Um, however, a, a codec like Aptex Adaptive that's used within Snapdragon Sound dynamically adapts so it will have a further range than, than standard Bluetooth technology. I thought this was kind of a fun question from a Snapdragon insider in Germany. Can you connect more than one speaker at once to one device? Yes. Yes, you can. So <laughs> so actually, if you think about these two wireless earbuds in my ears, um, they're 
you know, technically two different speakers connected to one device. The Bluetooth Special Interest Group are um, soon going to be ratifying a specification for LA Audio that will make uh, sharing from your phone to many headsets or many Bluetooth speakers possible. Um, and this also has great implications for applications like location-based sharing. So if you think about a museum or art gallery tour, this technology can also be used there. I've got a question here from at Seep Ranav in India. How much improvement in latent latency and battery can we expect in the future? On battery, um, we have made significant improvements over the past number of years. I mean, we've seen, you know, massive leaps um, for each generation. And I think that's something that we're committed to continually driving down because we're well aware that people want to use their earbuds and their headsets all day long without having to recharge them regularly. All right, we've got a question here from at Beyond Jake. Wireless sound is convenient, but often comes with some trade-offs. Things like audio stutter and poorer call quality have become far too accepted as the norm. What are some things you're doing to solve these issues? That question sums up why we have developed Snapdragon Sound. But we were well aware that, you know, the overall user experience across the board isn't there and you know there are certain um you know areas where you know it falls down whether it's you know the seamless out of box experience the latency for gaming you know the the voice call quality and so really what we've done with snapdragon sound is taken a systems levels appro approach and looked at you know audio across the entire audio chain to ensure that no matter what users are doing no matter how they're using their devices they're getting the very best experience possible okay i, I think we're kind of getting to the to the end of the the questions here we've got one more from at ryjb what are you doing in terms of noise cancellation I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, we are doing some really exciting things with, with noise cancellation to help our customers develop smaller form factor products that are more um, more efficient in terms of battery consumption. We've actually integrated our ANC onto the SOC. So instead of using a separate component, which can you know drive up costs, drive up the size and um, they're able to kind of de deliver products that are you know smaller form factor that still give very premium performance in terms of active noise cancellation, but are also available at, at price points that are more accessible for more consumers. I'll kind of cut that off right there because I'll, I'll ramble on. <laughs> let, let me tell you about how cool your ears are. Come on, folks. Um, so so we'll, we'll, we'll save that. We'll have to have you back for a follow-up conversation just so we can kind of nerd out on that for a little bit. Yes, I would love that. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll have your people, my people, it'll, my people are me. <laughs> I've got my own calendar. So it's, it's good. So we're getting to the end here, folks. Uh, but with this Snapdragon sound reveal, Qualcomm has launched a promotion with Amazon Music HD. We've got some links down below this video if you want to check it out, if you want to sign up. And you can try out Amazon Music HD for free. And there's also a playlist curated by Qualcomm to test drive those Snapdragon sound improvements. The Snapdragon sound playlist um, was 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 created by by us and by Amazon to really try and um, you know have tracks from multiple genres that people can really you know critically listen to and learn what to listen for when they're when they're experiencing high res audio. Yeah, because I'm looking through this and I mean there are some great acts. I mean we've got uh, we've got Celeste. Uh, there's a Led Zeppelin remaster. The Clash. Um, uh, Foo Fighters, Harry Styles. But what was what was the track that you had mentioned that you really liked? Uh, Sim Panthers, um, Real Love Takes Time. Um, it's really, it's uh, it's just, I don't know, it makes me want to dance every time I listen to it. And I have danced in my kitchen when nobody's been watching. Any track that's going to make you want to dance, you don't want to have like a cable tying you down. Nope, if you nope. Wanna get up you want to and... be able to let loose and dance, <laughs> dance like. No one is watching, which no one was watching because I would never let anyone see me dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to, to have this chat, sharing this information on Snapdragon Sound. I, like I said, I'm really looking forward to hearing how this project evolves over time. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed that chat. Of course. All right, folks, uh, I think it's about time we called this one. If, if you're catching a channel like mine, uh, chances are pretty good that you also like to dig into these kinds of technologies a bit more than the average bear. So if you'd like to stay up to date on these projects, you can follow at Snapdragon on Twitter. You can check out at Snapdragon Insiders on Instagram, or you can sign up for their newsletter, snapdragoninsiders.com. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. You already know where you can find me 
around the rest of the web at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Patreons and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.